Samurai Lens here with another movie recap for you all. A man finds a black rabbit in one of the poorly made traps he set. He takes it back to an area with a trailer and fire pit. As he prepares it, he keeps eyeing a small, creepy, locked up shed. He holds food in his hand and hesitates to go up to it. We get the impression that he is surviving in the woods alone, and entertains himself by carving items out of wood or reading, by the river. He's unhooking fish he's caught when he hears a quick yell in the far distance, it sounds like it could have been an animal or a human. He walks further into the woods to investigate and he finds a fully dressed woman laying on the ground, he takes her back to his trailer and after she's tucked in, we see him roasting some fish on the fire outside, he slides the skin of an animal under the shed door, just enough for whatever's inside to grab it, he returns to the trailer and offers the woman some water, but she says that she just wants to go to the hospital and he has to let her go, she tries to get up, but the pain is too much. She tells him she'll stay a little longer. While sitting at the campfire she thanks him and introduces herself as Emily, he doesn't respond, she says she likes his place, and that it's quaint, she used to go camping with her grandfather and they had an old blue tent that smelled like mold, she asks him if he has any aspirin because she's in a lot of pain, he goes off into the trailer and starts rummaging around until he emerges with an ice pack wrapped in a towel, they lift up her leg pan to find a giant bruise around her knee, Emily. Asks if it's broken and he shakes his head no, he finally breaks the silence and says he just knows how to take care of himself. Later, while she eats, she talks to him about stuff she loves and tries to ask him questions, but he doesn't say much, she says she has to leave tomorrow because she's running out of time, and when he asks if she has somewhere to be, she says it's a doctor's appointment, she asks him why he doesn't look at her face and he tells her to stop, she says okay, but then asks another question, he snaps and says he doesn't need to know every thought that goes through her head, she limps back into the trailer, saying sorry over and over again. In the middle of the night, he's crawling in the woods when a noose suddenly appears around his neck, reaching into the sky, he chokes until he wakes himself up. He walks around his trailer to find Emily peering inside the shed, flies can be heard, but she can only see leaves and mud at first, until she catches a glimpse of what appears to be a young girl with long hair, she screams and tries to run, but the man catches her. An old man named Moses Rafferty is recording his memoir in front of Emily, He'll never forget a recon mission in 1971, they only got a few miles before he realized they were going in the wrong direction, he made the mistake of not saying anything, after the plane landed, his idiot commander suggested they set up camp in the unfamiliar environment, before long, everyone around him suddenly hit the ground, he did too, as hundreds of enemy soldiers came pouring out of the jungle, he says, my heart was pounding, sometimes you can play a hero, but sometimes you have to play dead, I was the only one that played dead. He apologizes to Emily for getting emotional, and we see that she's going through dialysis treatment, he asks if she'll be there tomorrow and she promises. She arrives the next day, entering her grandfather's house only to come back out a few seconds later and fall to her knees, sobbing. She's packing many items into a bag as she cries. Her friend drives her to a forest and once the car stops, she asks what is really going on with her, Emily simply says that she needs to clear her head, as she walks into the woods with her backpack. Her friend swears that if she's not back in seven days, she'll consider her a missing person. Immediately, Emily feels peace within the forest, she stops at a tree to tie a red ribbon around it, building shelter and setting a fire is easy for her, she checks out the map before proceeding, after going further, she kneels by a tree and opens her pack to discover that her flask of water has emptied all over everything, she lays out each item in hopes that they will dry, she sleeps in her sleeping bag uncovered, and in the morning she's walking through snow without her backpack, she looks. Pale and cold when she sees the ghost of her grandfather standing very still with his back turned to her, when she touches his shoulder, he looks at her and says, play dead. She wakes up in her sleeping bag and continues her trek through the woods with dried items in her backpack, she can see her breath in the cold air while she follows the river, she hears whistling and drops her backpack, walking towards the edge of the river to investigate, she sees the man unhooking his fish, but as she's backing away, she trips and hits her head on a rock. Back in the trailer after the man said he didn't need to hear her every thought, she falls asleep and wakes up when she hears the whistling again, she leaves the trailer and sees the man slumped over, asleep. She finds the shed and peeks inside, finding the little girl, the man tackles her and tells her to shut up and listen, but she tries to fight him, he says he's gonna give her some options and she needs to think about it, they argue about whether or not the little girl is real, Emily remembers when her grandpa told her to play dead, so she does, the man ties up her hands, but she knocks him out as soon as she has the chance. She ties him to the bed in the trailer and walks back to the shed. She breaks open the lock and there's a little girl crouching low, she's filthy and terrified, quickly deciding to bolt into the woods, the woman chases her, 
and finds her back inside the trailer beating the man with her fists, she pulls her off, only for her to run away into the woods, Emily tells him that she can't leave the little girl in the woods with him, he says he knows, and that it's not what she thinks it is, he explains that she just appeared one day and up until now he didn't think. Anyone could see her but him, he says he doesn't even know if she's real. Later, Emily is feeding the man and demands that he show her and the little girl the way to the road, they both hear whistling, but before she leaves the trailer, he tells her to grab a book off the bookshelf, it's the girl's favorite, she asks what the girl's name is and he says, it has no name. She stands outside the trailer, holding up a lantern while she reads the book loudly, the little girl approaches her, and when she gets close enough, the woman sees that she is snarling and pale, Emily moves away, and goes back into the trailer, she points a gun at the man and asks how long he's had her in the shed. He doesn't answer that, but instead tells her that whatever this thing is, it could hurt her, she says that she could kill him, he says, maybe you should. We see the man and the same little girl looking better than they do now, sitting on the porch of a house, she looks a little disturbed, and he tries to ask what's wrong, but she doesn't answer, he has a jar of peanut butter and suggests that they eat it with their fingers, she watches him make a huge mess and laughs, calling him dad. In the morning, Emily leaves the trailer with the man tied up and he screams for her not to leave him. Later, Emily returns to find the little girl standing outside the trailer with a rabbit mask on her face, the trailer door is wide open, Emily tries to comfort the girl, reaching out to her, she takes off her mask, and she looks calm before she tells Emily, you're a missing person, and runs away. Inside the trailer, the man is covered in a carefully arranged pile of sticks, he says that she did it to him, and she was going to set him on fire, Emily asks if maybe it's because he kept her locked in a shed. He goes on to say he doesn't know how long it's been, only that it's been a while, the first few times he saw her, he thought it was a figment of his imagination, he doesn't know what it is, but it tortures him, he built the shed for it, and after he locked it, it just appeared inside. All he knows is that when it's inside there it leaves him alone. In the morning, the little girl is over the man and Emily tries to talk to her, but the girl bites her and runs away, Emily chases her outside and sees the ghost of her grandfather again, he asks, you'll be here tomorrow. She tells the man she's seeing things and needs to leave, he agrees to walk her to the edge of the woods, but warns her that she'll never leave. While they walk, she asks how long she's been in the woods and he guesses five days, she informs him that her kidneys are bad, so she has to get to her appointment in two days, otherwise it's a crapshoot, he asks, who goes into the woods on dialysis, and she asks, who lives in the woods alone. They hear a pop and walk to a trap he set, he collects his kill and they continue walking, they begin hearing popping noises coming from all different directions, even though he says he only set six traps at the most, the man stops to pick up what appears to be a little stuffed animal, and looks at Emily to say that it was the little girl's favorite, when he looks back down at it, he sees that it's actually a dead baby rabbit, he drops it and scrambles away, disturbed, he screams out to stop. Messing with him, he tells Emily that the whole thing is happening again. They are suddenly back at the trailer and it's sideways now, the campfire is burning all of the little girl's belongings, Emily sees both of their IDs in the fire as well, noticing for the first time that his name is William, he sees it too, and says he's a missing person. They fall asleep sitting beside a tree together, the days are passing and they're running out of time, in the morning she finds a dirty jar of peanut butter by the tree they're sitting at, and offers him some, he doesn't move. They decide to walk back to where he originally found her to look for the bag she had with her, she finds her bag, but it's empty, except for her grandfather's antique compass, she's very disturbed by this because she buried the compass with her grandfather, the man says that things appear in the woods all the time, and that he didn't walk into the forest with a trailer, but he used to have an identical one, he admits that the girl is his daughter, and that she drowned in the bathtub, he says. That everything the forest gives them is from their memories. After walking for some time, Emily looks very pale, she asks how much longer and he says it's just past the river and she'll be home by tomorrow, why would he say that if he already told her she'll never leave? She points the gun at him and he asks what she's doing, she tells him not to turn around, but he does anyway and his daughter is standing behind him without the mask. He approaches her and this time he believes she's real, he tells her to stay where she is, and calls her Peanut, Emily flinches, says her grandfather used to call her Peanut, and shoots the girl, William screams no and charges Emily, choking her against a tree. After 10 agonizing seconds, he stops and walks away as she coughs, back at the shed he built, he stares inside it, with a dead animal and flies swarming. Emily is limping through the woods alone and finds a red ribbon she tied, she cries in hope and follows the ribbons to each tree, as she's untying one, her eyes focus beyond the tree, where she sees hundreds of ribbons tied to trees, she realizes she has no idea where she is, and everything looks the same, she pulls out her grandfather's compass and the needle isn't moving. She starts experiencing tormenting and realistic hallucinations. 
she comes to when she hears police sirens and dogs, she's in the back of a cop car when he approaches the window and asks about a little girl, Emily says she already told another officer about it, they start driving out of the woods when the cop starts repeatedly telling her to wake up, screaming at her, she yells that she is awake, but he pulls over and starts shaking her violently while yelling for her to wake up. Suddenly the cop turns into William, she cries and tells him she got lost, and he comforts her, they're back at the shed he built with a campfire and she says she doesn't know how much she has left, he dares her to find out. They start walking again, and she's struggling to keep up, following Emily is a person under a white, thin sheet with a golden crown, she starts depending heavily on William to keep her moving until he sets her by a tree, he eyes something by the river and tells her he'll be back, she tries to tell him not to leave, the little girl in the rabbit mask is watching him, Emily is sitting against the tree, looking pale and nearly dead when the crown ghost stands directly in front of her, William sees the rabbit mask floating down the river and he has a flashback to when he held his little girl after she died in the bathtub, he keeps telling her he's sorry. He returns to Emily to find her dead against the tree, he carries her to a clear area where he covers her in sticks and sets it on fire, he wanders away a short distance, seeing visions of his daughter, unexpectedly, a car passes by him. We hear him say that everything is happening again. We see Emily standing in the forest, she slowly turns around and sees the same sideways trailer, she is distraught and wonders how this could be happening all over again, now, beside the trailer is the old blue tent from her childhood memories. She's surviving in the woods in the same way William was, she harvests carrots and cooks a rabbit, she feeds something to whatever is in the shed and listens to her grandfather's recorded memoir.